Hi everyone, uh, thanks for checking out this video. So this is going to be a video about um, the bubble sort algorithm, which is an algorithm for sorting um, sorting arrays of numbers. So I'm going to show you guys like the basics of this um, sorting algorithm, and then um, show you guys how to implement it in Python. So, um, but first, before we get into the material, I'm just going to tell you guys like why it's an interesting problem to think about how to sort an array of numbers. So, like, why is this interesting? It seems like uh, seems like too easy of a thing, right? It's so. It's, I mean, like, why is it even interesting to talk about like sorting algorithms? So, the reason that people talk about um, sorting algorithms in computer science is because it's kind of like when you're when you're taking your first computer science class, like intro to programming or whatever. The goal is just to write a program that like gives you the result that you want. So in like an intro to comp sci class, you would basically just be trying to write any kind of program that could like sort an array of numbers and get them in the right order. Um, but when you get into the more advanced classes like data structures, um, algorithms, uh, kind of like the more advanced topics in computer science, then you begin to think about like problems where there are there are like multiple different ways of writing an algorithm to solve the problem and how to evaluate which algorithms are good and which are bad and like strengths and weaknesses of different algorithms. So if you were in like an intro to comp sci class, you'd just be trying to like write any kind of code that can get this uh, get this uh, array in order. But in like a data structures class, you would be thinking about like multiple ways of writing code to get this in order and how to think about like which ways are good, which ways are bad, which ways like scale to larger larger arrays um, better and worse, and how to like quantify those things. So that's kind of why it's an interesting topic. Is it's about like th they use a very simple problem of just like sorting an array, but that's a good like starting point for thinking about like algorithm design and like strengths and weaknesses and like scalability of algorithms. So that's kind of why it's an interesting topic, even though it seems like um, very easy. And this is also the kind of stuff that comes up on like job interviews too. So that's also why it's a good reason to know it. But okay, so let's get started with um, explaining bubble sort and the basics. So we have um, an array here, an array of numbers. I've made them uh, integers, but they this could work with um, floating point numbers too. So we just have an array here. Keeping it simple, only four numbers for now, but the idea is that um, when we design the algorithm, it should work for like any size array that we give it. So how do we get this in order? And how do we just, because um, I mean, like obviously since it's so small, we can do it visually here, but how do we write an algorithm to get this, uh, to, to get this array in order from uh, least to greatest numbers? Um, okay, so this is what's called bubble sort. It's an algorithm that like mimics the larger numbers like bubbling up to the top. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to um, iterate through the array. And at each step, we're going to compare two numbers that are next to each other and then see if they're already in the right order. And if they're not, we're going to switch them. Um, and if it seems like this is like a very simple way of doing things, it is, and this is usually the algorithm that they give you an, as an example of like kind of a naive algorithm that it gets the job done, but there's a, a lot of room to improve on it and make it more efficient. But I'm showing you guys this as like kind of a starting off point of like an algorithm that's like not really that clever. Um, but okay, let's, let's uh, give it a try. Okay, so we're going to iterate through the array and at each point we're gonna compare two numbers and see if they're already in order. And if they're not in order, we're going to switch them. And we're going to keep iterating through the array until we get a pass through the array that doesn't require any swaps. And at that point, we're going to know that um, we're already done because we'll already be uh, in the right order. Um, okay, so we, just, we start with um, we just start with our first pass through the array and we get to the first two numbers, four and one. So we see that these are not in the right order so we're going to have to um, we're going to have to swap these. Okay, so this at this point the uh, the array is going to look like this because we've swapped the one and the four, uh, but we're still still going through this first pass here. So the next one is going to be four and seven, right? So these actually are in the correct order because four is less than seven, so um, we're basically fine at this point. But then the next one seven and three. So we can see here that um, these are in the wrong order because seven is greater than three. So we're going to also um, swap those, right? 
So then this is what our array looks like now. Because we swapped the one and the four, and we also swapped the three and the seven. Um, okay, so it's still not in order, but it's looking a little bit better, right? So we're gonna do our second, um, our second pass through the array. Okay, so we check one and four. Okay, these are good, these are already in the right order. And then we check four and three. Okay, these are in the wrong order, so we're gonna need to swap these. Um, and then we check four and seven. And these are in the right order, so that's okay. So this is what the array looks like now. So we can see visually that it's already in the right order um, the way it is now. But for the algorithm, we don't, we don't know, like, when we're running the algorithm, we don't know that it's done until it completes a pass through without requiring any swaps. So we do have to go through one more time and like check each one. And even though we can see visually, we still need to like actually, um, actually check it. Okay, so we start with one and three. Okay, these are in the right order. So we go to the next one, three and four, right order. And then four and seven, right order. So that last pass didn't require any swaps. So at this point we know um, that this list is okay to return from the function as a, um, as a sorted list. And it's like I said, this is kind of like a basic way of doing it that's kind of usually used just like an example of a naive sorting algorithm that, that there's a lot of room to improve on. But this is a good starting off point. And from here, I'm going to show you guys like more types of um, sorting al algorithms and how to compare them and which ones are better and which ones are worse and stuff like that. But okay, so that's kind of the introduction. So next, I'll show you guys um, how to implement it in Python. Um, okay, guys, so this is going to be the actual Python implementation of the bubble sort. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is just um, make a uh, test array to work with here. I'm just going to use the same one I used on the uh, on the whiteboard. Um, so we're just going to use this to kind of like work with and test out. But then at the end, I'm going to show you guys how to do it with like an actual like very large array that we're going to randomly uh, generate. But just for now, I'll use the same one that um, I was using on the board. So four, one, seven, three. Um, okay, just so we have something to work with. And then, so the next thing is we're just going to define um, the function. So let's call it um, bubble sort. And it's going to take um, an array in. Um, okay, so now we need to think about how to do what I was showing you guys on the board, but like how to actually write it into code. So if you guys remember, um, we were basically saying that we're going to like keep making passes through the array uh, until there aren't any swaps. So that so that kind of gives us a hint that um, we're going to need some Boolean variable that's just going to be called swaps. And we're going to set this to be true for now, just so we have something to get started with. And we're basically going to say like, while this variable is true, we're going to keep making passes through the array. Um, and then once once we complete a pass through the array and end up with it being false at the end of the pass, then that's how we know we're done and we have a sorted list. So um, you guys might have guessed we're going to be using a, uh, a while loop here, and we're just going to say while, um, while swaps. Just so as, lo as long as this is true, as long as um, there's, there has been a swap made at the end of each passage, we're going to do another passage. And we're just initializing it to be true just so we have something to get started with. But like for each for each passage, we're going to actually redefine swaps to be false um, within the passage, and then and then we're gonna go through and, and and make the pass, and then if a swap occurs, then we're gonna set it to be true. Um, yeah. Okay. So this'll this will probably make more sense once I've written the whole thing out. But then, okay, so for each for each uh, each of these iterations of the while loop, we're going to say for i in range len ray in minus one because we're looking at pairs here. So once it gets to be once it gets to be the second to the second to last um, index, that'll be the last one we're doing because if we if we have it go to the very last index, then it won't have another one to compare it to there. So that's where we're going to uh, 
length of the array in minus one um, because we want the really we want this to go into the second to last index. Um, okay. So this is where we do the actual check. So we're going to say if array in i is greater than um, array in i plus one. So this is checking for to see if they're out of order for each one. So for each index, we're checking to see if the index is greater than the next index. And if this is true, that means they're out of order and need to be switched. Um, but if it's false, that means they're in order. So like for this one would be um, array in i would be four and array in i plus one would be one. And we see that um, four is greater than one. So this would evaluate to true and we need to um, swap these. So this is how we're going to do the swaps. So we're going to say temp um, is going to be array in i plus one. We need to just save a, uh, save a temporary um, variable here to be able to swap them properly. Um, and we're going to say array in i plus one equals array in i. And then array in i equals temp, our temporary value there. And then the last thing to do is, remember we set at the beginning of the pass, we set swaps to actually be false, but now a swap has occurred. So we're gonna set swaps to be true. And the way we've set this up is that if it gets to the end of the pass and swaps is still false, then we know that no swap has occurred and it's in the right order and, and good to return. But if a swap has occurred, then swaps will be true and this while loop will repeat again. Um, okay, but once it gets out of the while loop, um, then we're going to know that it's in the right order. So we're going to just return, um, return the array. Um, yeah, and that's basically all there is to it. So just to show you guys that it works, I'm going to now, um, I'm going to, well, first of all, we'll just print the test array before doing anything. And then we'll call bubble sort on the test array and, and maybe have it, um, we don't actually need it to because even without even without getting the return value, it'll still execute on the array and, and still sort it. But just to just to have it have it look like it makes sense, I'm just gonna also return the uh, test array again here. And then um, print test array. Uh, okay, so let's just see what we get here. And yeah, it, it worked uh, properly. So this is the unsorted test array, and then we call bubble sort, and then here it is sorted. Um, okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is just show you guys that this actually works on um, like a large array that we're gonna randomly generate. So I guess first we need to uh, just import random up here. And then we're going to just use this line of code here to generate a um, large sample of, uh, of random numbers. So it's going to be generating 100 random numbers between um, the range of 0 and 10,000. So then we're just going to try this out on this, um, on this actual like large array that we uh, randomly generated. Uh, sorry, maybe I'll actually like space this out more just so we can see. But yeah, so here it is, um, the unsorted uh, random array that we generated, and then here it is sorted. And we can kind of just eyeball and see that um, see that it works properly, or you guys can maybe take my word for it. Or if you want to be creative, you can write a test to um, actually test and make sure it's in order. But um, yeah, so it worked, it worked as expected. Um, also, one quick note here, um, I'm kind of, in this video, I'm kind of using the words array and list interchangeably because in Python, um, in Python, this kind of, this kind of, uh, data structure is called a list. But if you guys are taking like an actual data structures course, it's called an array, like more generally. And to be specific in, in Python, the list is a dynamic array. But if you guys are talking about like, um, these things are like algorithm design and stuff, it kind of, 
like a textbook would probably call it an array. Um, but I'm kind of using like list and array interchangeably here because in Python, a list is like a type of dynamic array. Um, but for these kinds of like data structure type algorithm design problems, people usually call them arrays. Um, but yes, that's just all I have for you guys today. Um, if anyone has any questions, just let me know in the comments. And um, also I'll put this code on GitHub if you guys want to uh, download my code and use it. It'll be on my uh, GitHub that I'll link to in the description. Oh, also just another random note. You guys might have noticed if you've seen my earlier videos, I'm using a different text editor this time. I'm using um, I'm using Visual Studio Code. Um, I'm doing this because um, Adam, the one I used to use, is getting uh, discontinued. So I'm trying to find another good text editor to use. Um, I'm pretty happy with this one so far. I don't know if I'm going to keep using it or maybe switch to a different one. But yeah, I'm using different different text editor. It's got the terminal like built in right here. So um, yeah, that's why it's something something a little bit different. But yeah, so that's just uh, kind of a random note. But but yeah, so thanks for watching, guys, and uh, and see you next time.